Radio Rahim here with Robert Garcia, getting Mikey Garcia ready for Lipinets on March 10th. Uh, and Mikey's always eager to fight, always eager to get in the ring. Yeah, you guys are fighting again at 140, and it seems like Lipinets is uh, his only hold card really is the weight and his ability to maybe take a shot and give a shot. Do you see any other challenges for Mikey in this fight? Well, look, um, I've I've worked with with many Russians, Eastern European guys, and uh, one thing about them is. They're dedicated, man. You know, I've worked with with people from all, fighters from all over the world, and I think they're the most dedicated fighters. So that's one thing that uh, that I know for a fact, especially on a, on a big fight where where very few give them a chance to 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 win the fight. I'm sure he's training like never before. So that's that's one thing that I I know he's gonna be prepared, ready to to try to pull out. Even though he's a champion, he's gonna try to pull off the upset. Because I'm sure Mikey's Mikey's uh, the favorite to to win the fight, but uh, but you know these guys are dedicated, man. They're, they're strong. They uh, they uh, they train hard, and for this type of fight, I'm sure he's trained like never before. You know, to your credit, speaking of guys who are training hard and dedicated, that's what we saw from Brandon Rios uh, just last week. When I saw the workout, obviously in the fight, even though it, it didn't end well for him. He did better even than a lot of people had predicted. What do you think was the difference on Saturday night? Look, but what was it, early this year or, or late December? We, uh, he called me and asked me, you know, that he didn't want to work with Ricky Funes anymore. So he told me, you know, there's, there's, you know, I want to go to this gym right there in Oxford. I said, nah, you can't go to that gym, Brandon. There's too much too much history behind and you just can't go to that gym. So I told him, I'm driving up there to Oxford right now. I, at, in the meantime, I called Donald Leary and said, meet us, meet us at Brandon's house. When we met, we told Brandon, the first thing we need to hear from you is that you're going to be dedicated, that you're going to eat healthy, stay healthy, don't, you know, don't, don't gain weight or, or don't lose 20 pounds the week of the fight like he normally does. And he promised us, both of us and his wife was in the meeting and uh, they promised us, he promised us that he was going to do it right. And since then, he started doing everything right. He started training the way the way he um, the way he was supposed to. He had a great training camp, man. He he trained probably like never before. You know, we we've seen we seen him get ready against Acosta when he won the title. He trained hard, but this time he was really really prepared. You know, things didn't go as well because hey, you know, Danny Garcia's a hell of a fighter, man. Danny Garcia came with a good game plan too. You know, before you decided to work with Brandon. Health was an issue for you. You were concerned that the kind of brutal sport that we're in, the kind of damage that he could take, may not be worth a return. You didn't want to see him come back. What did what changed your mind and decided to be a part of this fight? Look, when uh, when he fought Timothy Bradley, after the fight, it was over. He decided it was over. But when I seen him return, his return, I, I believe, it was sometime in August last of last year. Even though he wasn't with me, he was still with Ricky. I was there at that fight. I went to support Brandon, and I seen him making weight, eating breakfast that same morning. So that told me that he was that he was dedicated, and uh, and. And when he called me about not wanting to train with Ricky, I said, I'll do it. Because I know he showed me the, the fight before. Even though he wasn't with me, he was with Ricky. But he still showed me that dedication. Not like when he fought Bradley. It was just ugly. It was it was ugly. I'm telling you. It, was, it wasn't even pretty. But, uh, but just that itself told me that he was ready and he wanted to do it again. Brandon's always had a great heart when it comes to boxing. And... Uh, and you know, I know Brandon since he was 17 or 18 years old, and he's always been the the, the the troublemaker, the kid that talks smack and doesn't really have any filters. And he's still the same way. So a lot of people think, oh, it's maybe because he's been taking too much punch, too much punishment. I think he's just just that's just the way he is. If if if, if you know, if I know Brandon very well. I think he's, you know, he's still healthy. It was, it was more his dedication, his his weight, the problems that he had making weight that hurt him the most. It wasn't really more, it wasn't much the the punishment because he he does get hit, but but he's he's very strong mentally, physically. He's always he's always been a very strong person. After the fight, I mean, any competitor is going to be disappointed if he uh, lose by knockout, but he comported himself well. Do you think that there's a future for him to continue? Do you think that he you know, has done enough now to be at least proud of the performance and, and consider real retirement? Look, he's, he's, he's done enough. He, he was a world champion. He fought great fights, made 
very very good money and in, and in, in his career so i would definitely support him if he if he decides to to uh to retire but uh you know i i think i think i think if if we if we if we if we uh are careful with with his career i think he still has a couple fights left you know i don't one thing I told him right away, I, I told him after after the fight, uh, I said I just want, don't want them to use you uh, to feed you against uh, a young up and comer that 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 they're trying to move up or or uh, or a world champion like you know Keith Thurman or a Sean Porter or anything like that. I I would rather him retire. But if if we're able to 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 pick the right opponents, the right fights, I think he still has a couple fights left. Well, there's no question that Mikey Garcia has a couple of fights left and a couple this year uh, possibly in the works. Assuming that he's successful against Lipinets, do you see Linares as being your next opponent? Look, that's, that's a fight that we would definitely love to have. Uh, but uh, it seems like Linares and, uh, and Lomachenko are going back and forth. Maybe that's the fight that we're we're, we're going to end up seeing if, if Arum and Golden Boy are able to work something out because of the TV networks and all that. The date, I believe, has is, is been a little bit of a problem for them. But uh, but uh, if, if we're able to to get that fight, and that's the ideal fight for Mikey. You know, that there's no... Mikey, Mikey is a... a a lightweight and I think Mikey Mikey needs to defend his title or unify the title against Linares at lightweight but uh, you know it, it's all up to it's a business and we don't know how well the negotiations with Linares and Lomachenko are going and if and if we're able to see the fight then it's still gonna be a great fight we're gonna enjoy a great fight but uh, and Mikey's gonna we're gonna have to look a different direction but if it was up to me that that's our next fight you know not looking past lipinets but that, that would be our next fight uh sometime in the summer well an easier fight to make business wise would be errol spence who um mikey's mentioned <laughs> <laughs> is possibly facing by the end of the year i just saw your face what <laughs> why do you make that face and is that a good decision for mikey we both know mikey says things right off the top of his head and, and accepts huge challenges is this a bit too big a bite for him to take look uh, i already told mikey my dad is my dad is in the same uh, opinion as mine you know eventually mikey might end up at walter Wade, you know just like a lot a lot of fighters that move up in weight it, it sometimes it's not really because they're they're too big for their weight division that they have to move up it's because you know the business and their skills are good enough to be able to compete at a higher division we have fighters that have won four five divisions six divisions but it's, it's their skills you know oscar de la hoya did it mayweather pacquiao Cotto won quite a few titles at different at different uh divisions it's not really because they're that big they're, they're that big it's just that their skills are good enough to compete and i think eventually mikey is going to be able to do that but right now I don't think I don't think we're. I th it'd be kind of a, uh, it'd be a mistake to to go out there and challenge Errol Spence. You know, Errol Spence is to me maybe the best uh, Walter in the division. Very strong, very talented. So it, you know, it'd be. It, I'd, I'd say we have to take it easy on that fight. You know, Mikey might be able to beat some Walter Wits, but if we pick the right Walter Wits, maybe Mikey's able to compete at, at that division. But it'd have to be the right Walter Wits, not 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 a uh, Eros Pence. But if by the end of the year Mikey decides to make that move, then we're gonna train him, we're gonna support him, and we're gonna go do everything possible to be able to beat him. But you know, it wouldn't be my, it wouldn't be something that I that I uh, look or push for that fight to happen. Uh, you know, another guy that's trying to break through into the 147 division is Terrence Crawford. We probably would have the same business issues to put that fight together. But if you could get him at 140, would you take that fight? And uh, how do you see that fight shaking out? Look, with Terrence Crawford, another one of my favorite fighters, you know, pound for pound, one of the best, if not the best. He, uh, he He's that fight for Mikey, that fight that... Uh, that that will be that will I think will, I think it will happen, but because of the different TV networks and you know promotions, I think it's a fight that that will happen when when it's worth enough money for both TVs to work together like they've done in the past with HBO Showtime ESP whatever it is they they're able to work together because the fight's big enough. I don't think it's big enough now to where Aaron will allow. Crawford to come and fight on Showtime, or where or where Mikey's gonna go fight.
Crawford on ESPN. I think eventually, you know, when 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 the when the the fight's big enough, it'll happen. But I don't think it's anytime soon. It could be three years, two three years, and they're young, so eventually it'll happen. You know, Mayweather Pacquiao took like five six years to happen. So it's probably we're probably you know not in that level, but we're probably looking toward you know a big big enough fight where both TV networks are able to to uh, to do the fight together. And another fight that's been a while in the making, and it's maybe not as big as it should be yet, but maybe by the time it gets here, I think people will pay attention, is the rematch with Mares and Santa Cruz. Uh, you've got Mares now. You guys are having great success. And he's very confident about that matchup. You, obviously, he's been in the ring with Santa Cruz before, unsuccessfully. What do you change for the rematch, and how does Mares come in differently to be victorious? Look, I was there at that fight. I seen the fight live, and uh, it was a hell of a fight. Um, I, I, I feel you know before even knowing that that Midas was gonna come train with me, I felt that he fought the wrong fight because I I always liked uh, Midas' skills earlier in his career, but then for 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 a few fights, it seemed like he was just he just wanted to exchange and brawl, and he tried he did that in that fight with Leo, and I think it was just the the wrong fight. I think if I, if Midas fights smart the way he's been doing lately with me and uh, by that time he's going to be even better than his last two fights i think we're gonna we're gonna be smart enough and fast enough to be able to pull, pull off the uh the fight uh i'm very confident about it and so is so is abner and i think with a good 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 training camp we're gonna be able to pull it off you know and lastly the pound for pound king spot is not defined nobody's got like a lock on it but no matter who i ask you'll hear one of uh, four names mikey garcia Vasil Lomachenko, Terrence Crawford, or Errol Spence. Everybody says. So sorry, if you would have, before you mentioned those, if you would ask me, those, those were the four that I was going to mention. Look, I I personally like like skills. You know, skills. Uh, you know, some people like that that one that knocks everybody out. You know, people have mentioned Triple G. People have mentioned uh, Kovalev. Mm -hmm. But me, personally, I like to see skills, and uh, those four fighters that we mentioned, I think are the four most skilled fighters in, in this business, you know, with Lomachenko, what he's done in this, you know, he's just a complete athlete and, and, and does a great job in, in, in the ring. Uh, Crawford has done a great job, Errol Spence, Mikey, you know, the, the, that, that's what I see. I see skills, and it's hard to pick which one's your favorite there, because... Uh, because they're it's even hard in, in, in their own way, they're all four are, are great. So what does Mikey do? How do you, what do you do with Mikey to separate him from that pack? How does he distinguish himself as the best amongst those well, look, giants? If if we're able to, if we if we would be able to in a perfect world, me, if I was able to to, to get the fight with with uh, with Linares, that that's that that would be next uh, after Lipinets. Not looking past Lipinets, but you know, in a perfect world, right. I would pick uh, Linares, and then before the end of the year, I would pick a fight against uh, against uh, Lomachenko. And I think that would probably, make, you know, if Mikey beats both of them, then that would probably make Mikey pound for pound number one. But then you you also have at the same time, you know, Crawford that would probably want to fight Errol Spence, and if and whoever wins there, you know, it's really hard. You know, right now it's really hard. I think I think it's it's uh, it just depends on who who's who you're asking, you know. But uh, it won't be easy to to make a decision because it's really hard. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you in the corner for all of these fights. Uh, you've got a big dance card coming up. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, Robert. Radio Rahim with Familia Garcia. Robert Garcia. <laughs>